All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some Selesnya arc bow. So this was uh, an iteration now of the Selesnya Titans version 2 that we played a few days ago. Um, I'm kind of moving a little bit away from the Titans, and so then therefore just kind of going to name it arc bow instead of Titans. Um, before with the Titans, we had the four Nullhide Feroxes, the Titans are referring to the 6-6 six, six creatures, or creatures that put 6 power and 6 toughness into play because of the Titan cycle in M11. And it had 3 Oketras and 3 Tulsimers. But I've moved towards Lyra Dawnbringer and Shalai Voice of Plenty. These are just two other strong creatures that are in the air also. I think that the flying with Shalai and Lyra are really important. And something that's like kind of the, the weakness of both Shalai and Lyra is that you play like they're really expensive to to play like they're expensive creatures four and five mana and they don't have any enter the battlefield effect um if you don't really count shalai's but yeah they don't really have an enter the battlefield effect they just you just play them on your turn your opponent and then they don't have haste or anything like that your opponent just has an entire turn to kill them before you do anything however both of these cards play incredibly well with vivian's arc bow when you can put them in at instant speed if you're putting them in at your opponent's turn either at their end step or even better during combat whenever they're attacking these are two great cards to put into combat especially lyra dawnbringer but it's it's putting down the uh, the weakness of these cards whenever you're playing them instant speed the weakness is not nearly as much of course we have vivian champion of the wilds that can play them instant speed as well uh so yeah i've been really impressed with those two cards so have a lot of those in the deck um I would still like to find room for a second Knight of Autumn in the main, but this is where I'm at right now. I could see playing three Vivian Champion of the Wilds in the main and having the fourth in the sideboard. I've done that quite a bit. Um, right now, I'm, I'm at the fourth in the main. This deck's really built to beat the aggro decks. We see a ton of mono red in particular on Arena, and this deck is, has a really high win percentage against mono red with having all these Shalais and Lyras and Nullhide Ferox and Tulsimer, all that kind of stuff in the main deck. Um... And uh, and it's pretty good against control too, because all the instant speed game with the arc bow and the and the champion of the wilds and the null hide feroxes are really good against control. I think where this deck kind of struggles more is against some other mid range decks that have more card advantage and interaction. Uh, particularly a lot of the esper the esper decks going for, like esper control used to be like the biggest esper deck, but nowadays, especially the last like two days, I've been playing against a whole lot of esper hero. And this deck will kind of struggle some against Esper Hero. Uh, that, because we don't really have the removal to get rid of Hero of Precinct 1. And Hero of Precinct 1 can just block Nullhide Ferox for days. And then, you know, they have Thief of Sanity and Deputy Detention and stuff like that. Because of that deck, that's why I'm playing the Tulsmer again. I, I went away from Tulsmer for a little bit, but that's why we have the Tulsmer in here. I did, a, or playing this deck in ranked earlier today off stream while I was practicing it, I did end up going 3-1 and one against Esper Hero, but... So, like, it's not like it's a terrible matchup for us or anything. Um, turn one Land War Elf still makes your deck a lot faster than theirs. And if you can get Land War Elf out, you're going to be doing pretty good. And Shalai and Lyra can go over the top, of course. Um, so can Oketra. But I think overall the Esper Hero is favored. And I, I think my opponents were, weren't playing perfectly. But, of course, I knew my deck probably better than they did. And even though I went 3-1, it could have... You know, with different play from my opponents, it could have been like 1-3 or so. Um, but yeah, so this is this is the list that I'm liking right now. I'm I'm going with a... Th I, I I've always played 3 Demystify and 2 Crowl Harpooner, but I'm going with a third Crowl Harpooner in, instead of that because I just have not seen Nexus in a long time. And so that's why I'm cutting one... Like putting one Knight over in the board and going down on Demystify because I just haven't really been playing against Nexus uh, too much. Um, the Demystifies are also good against Mono White, too, with how cheap they are, how you can get rid of any of their enchantment removal or history of Benalia or Legion's Landing, even. Um, it's real good in, in all of those. And I'm putting a third Harpooner in because of the Thief of Sanities and stuff in Esper Hero. Uh, but that's the deck. Let's uh, give it a try and see how it goes. So I am currently uh, in Diamond Tier 2, so we are four wins away from getting to mythic we'll see if we can get there or if we are going to go back farther back into diamond 
Um, and that's what that's what we got. Yeah, this deck could be really good in best of one when since it is kind of built to, to try to beat mono red and esper control. Maybe this is a, a best of one deck, honestly. And I guess Portland Ranger saying that you play this in best of one a lot. Okay, yeah. I bet this is a pretty good best of one deck. Hey, what's up, Fandrin? Thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. Sub number seven on the day. I hope your weekend is going awesome, and I really do appreciate that support. All right, we got our best card to see in our opener, Land War Elf. That's a card we always want to see in the opener. So we got that, so let's go ahead and just get that in play. I'm just going to play the Null Hide Ferox from hand. We don't need to arc bow yet. We'll kind of wait on that. We have a good card against some history banalia tokens. Hmm. We could play this Vivian and have instant speed Tulsimer later. It's an option. I do want, I do want double white in, so I'm gonna just go ahead and shock. Actually, I'm gonna because maybe I'll discard this mobilized district, but no, I'm, I'll just get the Tulsimer in. We have more defense for Vivian. We'll eat up a knight, and I'm not gonna attack this turn with these being four threes this turn. Do y'all think that I should do like an R here whenever I play ranked with a deck? Like that? Like how I have the DD for donation decks? We already have a lot of people ask about donation decks or try to, you know, I always, I haven't ever done that before. But do y'all think that would be good if whenever we play ranked with something? All right, so one, two, three, four, five, so six to one saying yes. R for ranked. Um, I'm gonna play settle, I guess it's possible. It's a good question. Question is why mobilize district over some of the other colorless lands? It's a good question. There are a there are a ton of good colorless lands. Um, basically, we started with mobilize districts, and I've been still happy with them. But I've certainly thought about you know playing cards like Blastone and all you know. There's a lot of good colorless lands, but overall, we are a, an aggressive deck, and we we do like to attack and. I think I've been real happy with with the district so far. All right, we'll take off the hexproof so that we can. Wild animals, I love. <clears throat> People, not so much. Play Vivian. I was definitely There's worried wind. last turn the about like it rest. turned out they did have the mortify. But I was I was worried a little bit about doing the null hide ferox, getting rid of that. All right, we're doing all the trades. I'll take that trade. Yeah, Blast Zone's good. There's definitely nothing wrong with Blast Zone. But 
done a lot with mobilized district like it does a good job pressuring planeswalkers killing opponents like it it's a good card to have with ferox it of course uh matches well with um having the tulsimers also give you some extra legendary things And speaking of, let's just attack. Opponent's at 11. They got a chump block here to go to 1. Well, against a Night deck, it certainly seems like I need another Lyra. Knight of Autumn is great against History Banalia, even on the draw. I should probably play Baffling Ends. But how am I fitting all this stuff in? I guess Champion of the Wilds and Paradise Druid are cards I don't necessarily need as much. Basically going Paradise Druid because I don't really know yeah, like that's Paradise Druid helps, but it's not like really that necessary. <laughs> yeah, Arcbo was awesome there that game, wasn't it? Arcbo is just a great plan B if you know you don't have anything to do. I mean, our our hand was just loaded the whole time, so I just didn't need to Arcbo. But it, our hand was just loaded. I mean, we had. You know, Lanor off on turn one, and then turn three, uh, Null Hide into Lyra, into Tol or I guess into Tulsimer, into Lyra. Like, I mean, our hand was just always loaded. I could see cutting a Shalai. That's pretty nice. I could, I could definitely see doing that. Shalai doesn't match up well against History of Benalia. I don't really know why I kept this hand. I was kind of just talking and, like, clicked keep uh, before actually looking at the hand because I was just kind of talking and I just, like, the, the thing came up and I hit the keep button. That was kind of how that happened. <laughs> you do that all the time? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I should have kept that hand, to be honest. Like, this, this hand was a mulligan. <laughs> All right, that's what Knight of Autumn can do. You can just trade it. Like, on the draw, having your three-drop trade with History of Benalia is a really big win. And it traded completely with Benalia. Yeah. Um, I'll go and play this. Be able to block the Knight of Grace. And protect the Lyra Dawnbringer that I'll be able to play next turn for sure. Yeah, we do have 25 lands in the deck, so we have a, a good amount. Um, one of the main strengths of this deck is its consistency of being two-color, a good amount of lands, having the Branch Walkers and Jade Lights that help you find your lands, too. I don't really mulligan with the deck too much, and we don't, we don't like, stumble too much. Like, that's, that's certainly a strength of the deck, of, like, putting a good fight forward in all three games. A lot of other decks, like Esper Hero, for example, their more powerful draws are like their best draws are going to be your best draws most of the time. But you just have more consistency. Rude. I was going to be double blocking the Knight of Grace. That was my plan. If I don't block and then I play Lyra and they have removal spell for Lyra, I'm dead. Because then I'm... I guess if I do block, it's the same thing, though. I would still be dead. So might as well say no blocks in case of another Angrass Rampage.
So yeah, even if I would have chump blocked with a branch walker, if they kill Dawnbringer, they'll deal six to me this turn, so would have been dead either way. Yeah. And then they just kill us through the air. Alright, hand was a little little too slow. Little too slow. Phoenix is a problematic card. I agree, full art Lyra does look really cool. All right, going to game three. Turn one, land war elf. Now this is a keep. Cool, good Bordelin. Yeah, I'm getting this in. See, this is where Arc Arcbo can shine whenever your hand is not very good. Like, I think I'd rather discard a Branch Walker and look for something that costs four or less than play a Branch Walker. Big scary monster. Rar. Arc bow. <laughs> yeah, instant speed ferox. It's like, how are you ever supposed to attack? You just can't. Yeah, they didn't have lands though. Just turn three instant speed Ferox. Not bad. All right, want to know? And see if we can rattle off three more wins. Let's keep these wins coming. I was at Diamond 3 earlier today, and now we're in Diamond 1. I was like the end of Diamond 3 earlier today and just playing this this Arcbow deck. We're getting there. We're almost at Mythic. Honestly, no, Lion Tamer. No. Um, yeah, the mid-range matchups are the toughest. Aggro, control... Do okay there. But Shalai, Shalai and Lyra are like our cards against other mid range decks that help us out a whole lot. Oh, we're playing against Dirk. Yeah, opponent's Dirk. Dirk's a sub in the channel and everything. Uh, I don't know what's what's faster to mythic best of one or best of three i'm not sure which one's faster you went from diamond tier to or diamond two to diamond four with grixis yeah it sounds like me a couple days ago um actually maybe i want to just blow up this legion's landing hmm 
No, they can flip a Legion's Landing. I'd rather kill an enchantment that, like a, con I'd rather kill a Conclave Tribunal. Because Shalai will protect Lyra from the Lawn Enforcer. Honestly, Hexbomb, if you're just facing Mono Red and Esper all the time in like the lower rank tiers, this is, try this out. This is really good against Mono Red, and it's pretty good against Esper too. Um, yeah, you're not, like, you're real good against Mono Red. You are above average against Esper, but not like, it's not like you, like, win every time against Esper or anything. But this one is really solid against Mono Red. Ow. Well, I'm glad I didn't waste it on killing the Legion's Landing. Eh, it wouldn't have been a waste, but... Hexproof, Lyra. I'll just attack with the Shalai, gain four. Because they'd probably just La, La Rune Enforcer it anyway. But they can't tap the Lyra because the Shalai gives, gives it Hexproof. All right, more Lyra, more Knight of Autumn, more Baffling End, more Demystify, less. I don't know, the Paradise Druid was awesome for us there. But less this Vivian. Less. Do I really need Null Hide? Yeah, I guess it blocks pretty well. Hmm. But what are the other four cards I'm taking out? I think I have to get rid of one Oketra. Maybe both Oketras, but I think just one. I guess maybe I'm not maybe I'm not actually playing Demystify. Okay, maybe I just don't have the room for Demystify. I don't think I have the room. I think we can take out one Shalai, but I definitely don't want to go any any less than two. Yeah, it's kind of slow. We got Jade Light on three. We got Null Hide on four. Dawnbringer on five. Oh, uh, no, Dirk, no. Oh, yeah. Bow, bow times four is what you play against every deck. I have determined that that is always... It's always bow four. Always bow four. I guess he could go bow three. This could be a bow three, I guess. All right, I'll I'll tap the brakes just a, just a little bit. No, my bow. Because these angel, like even in these aggro matchups, getting these angels instant speed and everything is it's so brutal. And it also just digs and finds your angels. It digs really far. It finds your Knight of Autumn. It's it's very good. And yeah, they don't. They're just fine in multiples because you just have one, get rid of another. I want to just play the Baffling End this turn because I'm going to be spending five mana all of the rest of the turns. So I'm just. Um, so I'm just playing. I'm just playing it there. And I'm not attacking because I don't even think it's worth trading, like, dealing three to them for me to take one. Because, you know, they would gain one of the life back, so they would take three. Now, obviously, I look silly for not attacking. But for how much we win the late game, 
with this deck and with our hand in particular. Alright, I'm going to keep them from flipping landing. Eat that up. <clears throat> yeah, arc bow is incredible. I think I'm likely just activating arc bow next turn. No, maybe I'll play Dawnbringer and let Dawnbringer get Conclave Tribunal and then start activating arc bow to look for to be able to get hit Knight of Autumn. That's annoying. Um, ooh, ooh, no arc bow. Okay, not as annoying. Sure. Ow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a mono red with hydro crisis. That's mono red crisis. Mono red hydro jellyfish beast. We're just we're putting we're going big red and putting crisis in it. Another Luxodon? Or is this tribunal? Ah, another elephant. Okay, that's it's aggressive. Do I want to look six deep or seven deep? I don't mind discarding the branch walker, so I could play this land, uh, but then we're just like discarding the card off the top all the time. I'll just go six deep. Main reason why I want to go six deep is because we may find we may draw a baffling end, and I would like to be able to cast baffling end and activate for four. Tree fitty. Thanks for that reset for the fifth month. Says smart plays and quality entertainment. Thank you very much, Tree Fitty. And Cajun Guy, also getting in on the action. Hey, what's up, Cajun Guy? Being on the six month streak. Getting that new tie color. Now Dawnbringer can't be tapped. And we can, we can you know, activate Shalai or just keep on Arcbow in every turn. Get some like some beasts out here. And we're definitely just attacking with Shalai every turn. Because Shalai could, could be tapped. So, like, if they don't tap Shalai and we get to attack with Shalai, we're attacking with Shalai. Is it possible to build a competitive teamer mid range deck like the Bant one? Bant's going to give you a whole lot better stuff than teamer is going to give you. Call it like, you know, Oketra and Teferi and Deputy and Dovin's Veto and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot better than what Red's bringing to the table. Red's basically bringing Rekindling Phoenix. I don't know, Ilrog, I guess. It doesn't have the interaction The Bant does. That's the problem with Teamer doesn't have as good of an interaction. <clears throat> um. 
Maybe I should keep the land war off because if we hit Oketra here, then I could just cast the land war off and make a 4 4. Um. Mulhide? You're, you're fine. Sure. Make this thing a 4 4 3. Oh no! I meant to stop on upkeep. And I was going to discard this for 4. Ugh. Hey, what's up, Yud? Uh, what was... Uh, somebody, Cajun guy said here, The other day I was goofing around with Esper Angels, put a fun of spark double in it, casted it on Shalai. Ooh, that is nice. Spark double on Shalai? That's a good one. No, Ferox says for... If a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard, it does not just enter the battlefield. I guess I'm casting this thing now. Okay. The game was going to take a little while longer. It's definitely playing, you know, really safe, but it's going to take it's going to take a while longer, but we were going to be winning. GG's Dirk. If you're in here. If you're not, still GG's. All right, we're two away. Can we get two more wins? Let's start with trying to get this one. Hopefully we play against aggro again. We played against aggro twice. And all of our, you know, like our aggro matchups are just so good. That's like the, you know, one of the biggest strength to the deck is beating up the ton of aggro deck. So like we want to see stuff like mono red. That's fine. Branchy on turn two is just fine. Let's be playing against W Garden. It's the one that's west of Olive. I right, make it a three-two. Some spell that I can put in the graveyard. Awesome. We do we do okay against like Esper control. Esper um, Esper hero is a little tougher for us. Let's talk about this just at the beginning of the video. Um, I ended up I actually ended up three one against Esper hero earlier today, but um, I felt like I got a little fortune in there. I think like against Esper hero, you basically want to just try to stay five hundred. That's the goal there. So you want to be like 500 against like the mid-range decks of the format. And... Um, and... <clears throat> going to be like 500 against like the mid-range decks. Beat up on these aggro decks a ton. And then, you know, maybe a little bit better against 500 against Control. A little worse against 500. A little worse than 500 against Nexus. When I say stay 500, that means you win the same amount that you lose. 500 is a like a winning percentage term. You're you're winning 50% of your matches. That's what that term is ref referencing. It's more like a sports term. They likely have another skewer critics in hand, how they're waiting there. I 
I'll still just trade two for one. Hmm. And they're dead. So yeah, they, they had that other skewer, and they were hoping that I didn't block and were able to skewer, I guess, or... I don't know. I mean, they still could have paid three for skewer. Cause yeah, they can't. They can't. Uh, can't try to kill the Oketra at all, because the Shalai. Um, I could just double spell here instead of playing Ferox. I think I like double spelling. Gets a lot of four fours out there. We could see if we hit the green source here, though. Well, we get to do both. The Ferox also. That's a lot of power. Yeah, it's true. Frenzy is like the only way we can lose, so holding on to Knight for Frenzy makes sense. Ow. Fortunately, just not gonna. F I considered definitely considered firing up mobile mobilized district, but you know they would just have the chain whirler eat the mobilized district, and then chump the two six power creatures. Wow, they're going down to one. All right, well a frenzy can't really beat us here because they'd have to have land frenzy. So, um, you know, we could just throw another one of these out there also. But I'll just play this. All right, sideboard time. So, Baffling End, Knight, and Dawnbringer all in. Vivian out. Paradise Druid out. And one Oketra out. And I guess I'm going to take out one Arcbow, I guess. I guess. Yeah. <sighs> Spyglass does not stop Steamkin. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're. Yeah, because Steamkin's a man ability, so. Good Spyglass Frenzy and keep them from blowing it up. It's really hard to mulligan turn one. Land War Elf. Our deck is full of four and five mana cards. We can draw some more some more good cards.
Hey, Skyla. Thanks for getting that Twitch Prime sub in here. Welcome to the channel. I really appreciate that. Tenth sub of the day. We haven't done the best job of the whole drawing out of it thing that I was saying. Done a pretty poor job of that, in fact. So I don't like our chances in a later game. That's why I'm doing the attacking. I don't usually like attacking in this matchup. All right, Jun Super Friends is almost up on YouTube. Just got to do a couple more clicks. Hmm. Not ideal. All right, it's going up. Y'all aren't following the YouTube channel, you can always see all of the replays there, youtube.com slash Todd Stevens MTG. Yeah, the storm count uh, counts some people multiple times. Let's have a burn spell. All right, we're going to be on the play for game three. And hopefully draw better. I need one of my arc bows for all those lands. <laughs> that was a good game of Magic the Landing. All right, what do we got? What we gotta do is draw one land, and then Jade Light helps us out. I guess we'll take that if we don't get to draw a land. Hey, we get the land and a 2 1. Not bad. More lands. Mm. Those are not more lands. Chain Whirler would take out Branch Walker 
Uh, but then we'll like baffling end the chain whirler. Or I could play Shalai. Uh, Shalai doesn't block Chain Whirler very well. I'm not sure if I was supposed to block Pyromancer the last turn or not. Because now, yeah, like with that Lava Coil, now I'm taking 4 damage. Like, you know, I could have saved 4 damage. It could still be at 17 if I would have just blocked. But I guess the lava coil is gone, so for Shalai, so that's good news. Hopefully, there's not another lava coil over there. There is. All right, look, it's looking like I should have just blocked. Saved a lot of life. Hopefully the deck picks us up. And we can still pull it out, even though I could have could be have six more life. And the pyromancer could be gone. Of course, then they would have they'd be able to like pay two for Ferox and Coil and you know shock or whatever and kill Ferox. Maybe they could still do that. All the coils. Land. No land. Let's look for land. Really hoping no chain whirler. Please, no chain whirler. Okay, it's not chain whirler. Tibalt? Ooh, can't play Tibalt. Okay, we'll play Tulsimer next turn. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I could have waited with the Elf. I wanted, like, two blockers. Like, I, if they had, like, a removal spell for one, I didn't want to take two for the, from the Pyromancer. I think I'm, I'm more concerned about staying alive right now than making a 4-4 with the Oketra. What do you think is the best deck, standard decks right now? Um, all the Esper decks are really good. And, of course, like Mono Red, like our opponent's playing. Like, if, if you look at what, like, all the... MPL players are playing. It's just basically all mono red, mono white, and Esper. The only thing to fear, my assistants are painfully sloppy. Hmm. All right, so let's certainly need to tap tap that thing. Is they block and shoot the land war off, then I won't have the mana. But we're gonna have two of these attack you, this attack you. Get rid of this Tibalt so we can gain life, and I'll just play the Knight of Autumn and gain four. Because we're gonna be killing our opponent really fast with the mobilized district, the extra four four, everything like that. I'm not gonna like save a fr save it for a frenzy. I guess I cracked first. So they will be able to do like the neat party trick of like block Oketra and first strike damage, then shoot down one of my two ones, but that's just not going to be enough. All 
All right, we're three zero. We are one win away now from Mythic. I was six and two earlier with this deck off a of stream, like earlier today, and so now we're like it's kind of like we're nine and two, like since the beginning of the day of like trying to of like ranking up. Hey, Kojunk. No, the land does not trigger Oketra. Thanks for that sub there, sub number 11. I'm doing great today, Kojunk, doing great. All right, we're going to crack a pack because we got to 10 subscribers during that match. We hit our first sub goal there, and I'm also going to mark it down after the stream towards our next sub battle stream. Let's see if we get a Mythic. Yuck. Maybe the worst rare in the set. Yuck. Ugh. All right, well, it looks like we're going to have to bring our A or our B game to this match as our opponent is certainly bringing their C game. These. Are we on the play? No, not on the play. Never lucky. Overgrown tomb. What's an overgrown tomb? What's that card? Sultai. Sultai stuff. Um. So do I want Land War Elf, Arcbow, or play Vivian? Land War Elf Druid. Going with the arc, arc bow here, so next turn we'll just start arc bowing for five. See if we find Oketra. Hostage Taker is like a really good card against me. Not many people are playing Hostage Taker these days, though. That's the one I wanted. You know, it's not Oketra or Lyra, but no Hostage Taker on that Ferox. What? All right, it has trample, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, things happen. Well, it's not dealing damage. What if my null hide has anything to say about it? I kind of want to play the Vivian and give this, um, give this Vigilance. That's going to take my entire turn, though. And then if they have, like, cast down and kill the Ferox, then I'm in trouble. Uh, trouble is a strong word. I think they would kill, like, the Vivian. How this thing goes is up to you, pal. Lame. Sometimes not bad for a mouse.
I'll be back. Just like before. Do you think Storov, Devkarin, Lich... Could be a key to new Golgari Graveyard deck. No. Unfortunately. Or just not powerful enough. Oh, I thought it only got creatures. I guess it gets Planeswalkers back. That's kind of cool. If they play Vivian, they die, though. Well, they're dead. They can kill Shalai, but then I just have, you know, enough to kill them. Every fight makes me stronger. <laughs> I've seen worse. Unless they have, like, Land War, like, Land War Elf or something to block there. Hmm. Well, I mean, we had an awesome, awesome hand there with, you know, two Land War Elves, Arcbow. It's a very good hand. I'm not um, thrilled about playing, of, like, winning one of these next two, but all we got to do is just win one of the next two. Uh, Knight of Autumn is probably a dead or dead-ish card. Baffling End could definitely be worth it. If they are playing <clears throat> Wild Growth Walker and stuff like that. I don't know how many Baffling Ends I actually want, though. You know, one less Vivian, three Baffling End. I don't think I want Spyglass for their Vivian. Because they can always, like, Hostage Taker my Spyglass and name Arcbow, and that's annoying. Tulsmer also is removal. It, you get to gain life with Tulsmer. You get to kill other creatures. It's a valuable part of the deck. Yeah, you can find all the deck lists on the stream decker page. Yep, right there. All right, how good are we at top decking? See, last time we brought like our A game and so we beat our opponent's C game. This time, this hand is not, not very competitive with the C game. Hmm. Such a waste, but I wanna play the Vivian next turn and I don't want the Vivian to get attacked. There'll probably just be a huge Jade Light. Yep. Ugh. That was the scenario they did not want to hit. It's unfortunate. Alright, we're still in there. Yes, Rank, so it is. Omega says, I just tried this deck in best of one. I defeated Gruul in a 20-minute match for best of one. Went through three of their Carnage Tyrants. I like this deck. <laughs> awesome. So this is Thought Erasure plus Explore Creatures. Interesting. And we got a chance. All 
Arcbow resolved. No Arcbow removal, please. Okay. That's not Arcbow removal. Arcbow to the rescue. Time to get some instant speed Lyra Dawnbringers. <laughs> no attacks. Op scared. Really don't want hostage taker Lyra. I didn't really want hostage taker Shalai, so I didn't do the Shalai. I'm gonna keep Lyra. Okay, they have another fine finality in their hand. That makes sense. No, no I'm not gonna bin a Lyra. I was just like debating whether to. Debating whether to upkeep, activate the bow or not. Hostage taker is so good against me. We've seen them have Thought Erasure. I'll leave the Ferox in my hand. Even though... Um, like, we'll see if they have, like, another Thought Erasure. Like, that'd be nice. Go ahead, Thought Erasure. Now they had more Hostage Shakers. Dang. Even though that was the problem with playing the Dawnbringer is another Hostage Shaker. <laughs> I haven't made the Tezzeret deck yet. It's still in the works. Oh, right. I can't cast the Arcbow. Because of the Feroxes. Right, right, right. Yeah, I like I like the new Tezzeret with the tick up. Uh, has an awesome animation. I really like that. So we're, I'm assuming my opponent has fine finality, how they're trading. And that's going to be really bad for me. Yep, they're looking at their graveyard. Uh, we're not being another hostage taker and stuff. Ugh. At least we get to be on the play here. We're going to, I guess, try to have Lanwar Elf on the play. Well, maybe I do need all these Vivians. Maybe. I don't know. Hostage taker is just like, that's the, that's the card that's going to get me. Twenty-four creatures is not very many. Crasis is like the best thing for me to hit it, be hitting with the baffling end. Um, 
You know, using baffling ends on like two ones a bit earlier is not a very not very good. All right, great hand. Let's see how it goes. so much already I will tear it down tear it all down need more lands that was kind of a good minus for us though how there was no lands there so that means that we should have lands coming up like that um I want to get the arc bow in play is like the question Wait, I think the answer is no. You think nature is kind? It's possible they have a negate there. It's possible, but I think I'm just going to go double branch walker and try to get a, a lot on the battlefield here. Time to attack. All things begin and end in nature. That was not ideal. White mana, please. Ugh. Have you ever lost a home? <sighs> yeah, that thing grabbing an artifact's really, really rough. Said. Hostage taker turn four, hostage taker turn five. Like the one card that's like like the very best card in their deck against me. Ugh. I don't know why they don't attack there. Oh, I guess I have all my mana open, that's why. Duh. Duh. Hey counterbomb. Oh. GG's. Let me show you what was lost. <laughs> Can't baffling into hostage digger. Not what Baffling End does. See if we get something cheap. You fight like a city brat. All right, so four, five, six, seven. So we will not have enough to Oketra and Jade Light Ranger. So I think we get this Shalai here. So that I could Oketra and then protect Oketra with Shalai.
All right, we got there. Wow. They didn't know catch her like at end step while I was still tapped out. I didn't think we were winning that. I didn't think we were playing that. I really didn't think we were going to win that. <laughs> Shall I flash? All right, we've made it to Mythic. I am 10 and 2 on the day with this deck. I was 6 and 2 off stream earlier today. Or 4 and 0. We're at number 785 to start it off. GG's. All right, let's try for the 5 0. Let's get one more game here with Selesnya Arkbo. And we'll move on to our other two decks for today. Oh yeah, you're yeah. This deck is very very good against uh, decks aggressive decks tapping for red. Yeah, this deck's great against aggro, good against control, and then okay against mid range. You know, like you're just you just want to try to win half your games against the mid range decks. Hey, Callie. And Nexus is, can be a struggle. You see, that's why I have like the de demystifies and everything in the board. Turn one Lanawar, Lanawar Elf. I will keep. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking this deck a ton, Borderland Ranger. Yeah, we've had a whole bunch of success with it today. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Canthic says, Esper Hero isn't the worst matchup, but it's the most intense one. Um, it's it's the kind of thing of when you lose to Esper Hero, because all their cards are really snowball-y, so every game you lose feels awful because they just, like, Thief of Sanity bury you or Hero bur bury you or Teferi bury you. You get buried by Esper Hero. That's just going to happen. So just the games you lose, you lose by a ton. But you're also just more consistent than them, with them being like a three-color mana base. You have your turn one land or elves that make you faster. Um, it's not it's not a horrible matchup. You just the games you lose, you lose by a lot. Uh, like I said, I was three one against it, but I felt like my opponents, like earlier today, but I feel like my opponents didn't play the best. Like, if I was playing the Esper Hero on the other way, I, I probably would have been 1-3, for example. That's kind of how it was. Yeah, I I could certainly see playing another Tulsimer in the sideboard for Hostage Taker. I, I don't need three Kral Harpooners. Like, one of the three Kral Harpooners could be another Tulsimer. Because Tulsimer does help out against Hostage Taker just so much. Could have Tristani as well. Yeah, I could just play a Tristani. Absolutely. So this will take... My Ferox is going to die, but it's going to take their entire turn and a spell. And then, because we're playing like the Oketros, I just want to slow them down. I'm, I'm okay with this trade. Yeah, that was only a one for one trade, just lightning strike for Ferox, but it also just took their their whole turn. Yes, you really want to draw it that badly. That's why we have four arc bows, because you really want to draw it very badly. Now this is a two for one trade. And I'm not putting Oketra back. We got another one. What? My hair is on fire? Sit back and watch it burn. This is just going to be bad for you. Hmm. Chandra's really killing us here.
It's like if I attack Chandra, I go down to four. Beasts are much more reliable than you. The mysteries of life are. But I'm doing that. Let's see, so next turn Chandra goes to 7, and then the following turn they ultimate. So that means I would have, like, next turn to kill my opponent before this ultimate happens. And I can't kill my opponent next turn. I should, maybe I should arc bow. I guess I'll be able to arc bow next turn, and I'll look at eight cards. We can see if we can find a Shalai in eight cards, basically. There's no problem. Fire can't solve. So we'll have we'll have our draw step. The three that Vivian looks at, and then arc bow for four. I guess if we hit a land, we could arc bow for five. So we could look at nine cards to look for Shalai. And then we also have the, the two explorer before that. Well, that's Shalai right there. Strike now! Strike hard! So we have three Shalai's in here. Card we want to draw. I think opponent said GG because they thought I was winning maybe with a Shalai. Maybe that's why they just said GG. I don't know. Hey, what's up, Sleepy Aussie? Give me full control. I need to full control this. I think. Okay. Hope you're enjoying the stream, Sleepy Aussie. Hope your weekend has been very good. So our opponent has to shoot themselves with Shalai in play. Because you have to deal it to... Oh, it's target opponent or planeswalker. So does it have to shoot itself? It's not to target player. It's target opponent. They can't target opponent. They can't target this planeswalker. So does it have to just shoot itself then? Yeah, it's got to shoot Chandra. <laughs> Chandra... <laughs> Quit hitting yourself. <laughs> yeah, and that triggers her ability again, because then she takes damage again and has to shoot herself again. So yeah, you really only, only need to hit Chandra for one damage, like in that scenario. Because then one damage would trigger, and then trigger, and then trigger. Over and over again. Uh, so you could use like a a carnage or, or like a carnival, like carnival carnage, just the carnival deal one damage. That was pretty sweet. All right, Knight of Autumn, Lyra, Baffling End, one Arcbow, the Champion of the Wilds, the Paradise Druids, and one Oketra. Let's go to game two.
right, we got the quick toothbrush up here. It's an awesome, awesome electric toothbrush. Best toothbrush I've ever had before. Try it out. If you go through my referral link and sign up for Quip, you get your first refill for free, plus you get a free donation deck. Usually, if you want to see your deck played on stream, it costs $20 to have your deck played on stream, or you could spend $25 and get a really, really nice toothbrush. Treat yourself for that for an extra $5. Also, you get your first refill free, which is a $10 value, and you get a free donation deck. So if you go check out Quip and sign up, let me know, and you can get a free donation deck. I am not a dentist, uh, but it is uh, made. Quip was made by dentists, though. No lag issues have really. There's been some lag issues, but not very much. Um, yeah, changing changing the graphics and everything helped a ton. And then the other little thing that we changed was in OBS. It said that I was my server was in asia and there's a server you know here in virginia and i changed it to be the server here in in virginia instead of sending it all the way over to asia and that's helped as well <laughs> i could be a dentist i just have to go to dentist school <laughs> yeah one one in one todd stevens recommend quip <laughs> Arcbow. No two drop. I was really expecting Steamkin there. Or at least Vyashina Pyromancer. What? Can't gain life. Why would you not want to gain life? You should be flattered I decided to torture you. My friend is here to help you can't gain life. That's like your opinion, man. Uh, yeah, the percentage the percentages over here, this means once once you get to 100% then you get to the getting the top numbers and everything. So likely our opponents lost some matches in Mythic and has kind of gone down and has gone down to 97% now. This is a tough choice of playing Shalai or... Baffling ending the Steamkin. And I kind of want to just get rid of the Steamkin. I think that's the... that's my choice. We're gonna do that. What's up, Hawkeye? Brown, 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 brown. I have eight two drops in my deck. That's a lot of creatures. No, I don't want to draw all these shalais right now. Yeah, there's another Steamkin, unfortunately. Our opponent played around our turn two battling end really well by not playing one of those on turn two. If they had one, that is. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm probably not hitting it. Like my third July.
It's definitely helping to find like Null Hide Ferox or something like that. Yeah, Lyra would have been nice. We wouldn't have gained any life with Lyra, but it would have been able to block quite well. I think we're losing this game because of this Tibalt. We have to, they have to have nothing in their hand. If they have absolutely nothing in their hand, we can win. But they have to have nothing. If they have, like, literally anything, we're dead. Like, actual anything. We played three against Mono Red with Jund, and this is our second time to play against Mono Red with Selesnya. I don't know if that qualifies as anything. Enjoy yourself and live. Maybe like we can a beat king. that. Maybe. That may not be good enough for anything. Hey, what's up, Sleepy Aussie? Thank you so much for the kind words. And good eye, mate. <laughs> so we're down to one. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what the benefit of playing the other to ball. I mean, I guess yeah, because you just get like the other one one, I guess. The more, the Alright, so we need to attack here. We go to six. Right? Because that thing's gone? Oh no, we don't get to gain life? Oh, it was like Contempt that I've used before with that thing. Alright, well let's, let's gain some life. I think I'll still play that even with Arcbow. So we we could beat the Tibalt. We'll see if they have anything else. Puts me down to five. Or that deals me five, puts me down to four. We still have this covered. My turn? Wow. I think we did it. I think we did it. I knew you needed my help. Let's light it up. They did not have anything after the default. <clears throat> they needed anything. We were down to one. This deck is sweet. This deck is nice. Good old Selesnya stuff. Where's my five win dream emote? There we go. Yeah, 5 0 got us to Mythic. Pretty awesome deck here. Real strong. Strong to quite strong. Um, play until we lose? That could be a while, though. We got two other decks to play today. <laughs> the quit hitting yourself clip. Nice, Oslin. That's a good clip. Yeah, so if you are if you are uh, tired of the mono red menace just beating you up all the time, and 
you know, you want a, a good game against mono red and mono white, two two of like the biggest decks in the format. Uh, this is this is your deck, and then this deck still has some pretty good control game with the help of both Vivians, the Champion of the Wilds, and the Arc Bow, and Nullhide Ferox is real good against those against control. And then against against the mid range decks, they are the games are really tough. They are um, they're real competitive games, and you should hopefully just be winning about 50% of them, you know, and you just go 50-50 against mid-range. Uh, you're going to be probably under under 50% against Nexus probably, but not very many people are playing Nexus because of all the little Teferis around. And uh, hopefully you win a little bit more than 50% against Esper. Control, that is. Not, not Esper Hero. Esper Hero, hopefully around 50%. And then you really beat up and, you know, win like three out of four you know, 75% or four out of five, like 80%, try to really beat up on the aggro decks on mono red and mono white. How does this deck win against three band Teferi? You can still activate arc bow at instant speed. So if you just have arc bow in play, you still keep on activating arc bow in play. Three mana Teferi cannot bounce your null hide either. <clears throat> if you get a null hide out earlier, like with these things, null hide beats up on Teferi. Tulsmer is good. It's, it's like how you... It gives you like a little bit of removal to kill like a hero or a Thief of Sanity or a Hostage Taker. Also gain some life. It's it's really good instant speed as well. Um, gives you two legendary permanents to make Mobilize District super easy to activate. This is another card that kills a little Teferi. If they like Teferi bounce your thing, you can like Mobilize District and kill it. That's like a thing. You also have the Spy Glasses. Like, spy Glasses are like four Teferis. Also like against control. Um. Yeah, Bant mid Bant mid range is pretty tough because they have a lot of mana creatures in Oketra. Also, it's like who gets like their Oketra going. Um, you have to be able to fly over Bant mid range. You know, you got to have like you got to get like Shalai and Lyra and fly over. You know, you really want your Arc Bow in play so you can have these things instant speed. Um. <laughs> no, I would not replace Arc Bow with anything. This this is Arc Bow is like the. The best card in the deck. That's why the deck's called Arcbow. It's this is an Arcbow deck. Yeah, I I will use if I have nothing to do on turn three, I'll Arcbow for three. Like if I haven't drawn if I hadn't seen a single one, two, or three mana creature, if I just have like Arc like for example, if my hand is just lands, Arcbow, and then big things, I will Arcbow for three. Um and because then at that point you've gone through a whole lot of cards. Uh, by turn three, you know, you've gone through like 10 cards or whatever, and you still haven't seen, and then you get to look at three more and look for, you know, four, and you have 14 hits, like you're likely going to hit at that point. But for the most part, yeah, I'm, I'm more comfortable starting activating Arpo at, at X is four there. All right, if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give this deck a try. This is a really good one. Um, and there we go. Uh, question what do you think of prism realm over baffling end i hate it baffling end is for the aggro matchups you need it you need it on turn two uh do not want something that costs three mana especially even with null hide making making it cost five no don't don't want prism realm at all um okay there we go so again thanks for watching and i will see you for another video